This is a demonstration of Hooke's Law. In order to show you Hooke's Law in practice, I've got a series of five springs that are identical. They all have an original length of about two centimetres. They're hanging from this bar here. And I have a series of increasing loads going up in increments of 100 grams. What I'm going to do is leave this spring here unloaded and I'm going to load up these springs and we'll note the extension and then we'll see if there's a roughly proportional relationship between the load and the extension. Okay, so this one's going to remain unloaded and therefore that one will remain at two centimetres. 100 grams on this first spring here. 200 grams on the next one. 300 grams. 400. Okay, bouncing a little bit, not too bad. Now I can take measurements of all the lengths of the springs. As we noted earlier, that's two centimeters still. This one, if I take measurements, uh, I've already taken the measurements. Uh, but just to show you how you would take those measurements, I've got uh, another clamp here holding the ruler vertical, and I'll take measurements. That one is uh, 4.6 centimetres. This one, that's 7.6 centimetres. This one here is 11 centimetres. And the final one over here, that is... 14.5 centimetres. You should be able to see a roughly linear trend there, um, but hopefully to make that clearer, if I turn this ruler so it's following those tops of the springs roughly. ruler is roughly following the tops of the mass hangers there and you can see they're all lining up pretty well there's obviously a little bit of uh, approximation around the ruler so it's some are slightly higher than they should be some are slightly lower you would expect that especially given that my springs are different they're different springs I'm not using the do it the same spring in each case so the fact that there's a little bit of variation is not a major problem okay as for the relationship itself the relationship is between the load and the extension and not the length so that's what we need to do we need to deduct the original length of two centimeters from all of our measurements so let's see what we get there Okay, so the original is two semis, and then when we got a load of one on there, it was the extension in this case was 2.6, second one 5.6, third one. In order to confirm a directly proportional relationship, we are looking for when we double the load for the extension to double. So here, we should have got about 5.2. That's not, that's not too far away from that. Here, we should have got 7.8. That's a little further away. So that spring extended a little more than we would have expected and this one we should have got 10.4 so that one's further away still 
Uh, but we haven't got anything drastically contradicting that. So it's not too bad. And these, these theoretical values are actually based on just one spring. And if I was to plot this as a, and draw a line of best fit, then we would see something much better matching with theory. So this is just based on the first spring, and therefore uh, the fact that both of these are higher is not particularly a problem. Uh, Hooke's law says that force is proportional to the extension as long as we haven't reached the elastic limit. The loads here were not sufficient to take the spring beyond the elastic limit, and therefore I would expect that rule, that rule to be obeyed. But if I put significantly more load on there and took it beyond the elastic limit, such that you would, you would know if you had done that because the spring, when I remove the load, wouldn't go back to the original length. But the fact that it does means we haven't gone beyond the elastic limit. And therefore, Hooke's law is still obeyed. If we went beyond the elastic limit, it wouldn't be obeyed any longer.